And in our last class, I put this slide up with slightly different wording. I showed you this picture. This is something I found on the web. It is a picture, a map of the state of Georgia that was made by a map maker named David Burr. Sometime, his lifespan was 1803 to 1875. We don't know exactly when the map was made, but we do know that Mr. Burr made it. And I said in our last class that Mr. Burr had four colored this map, and it was pointed out to me after class that in fact Mr. Burr was not so clever. Uh, there are five colors. And so if he had worked a little harder, he could have done better. Now, the idea that maps can be four colored, and what is a, a map? A map, uh, you divide up some counties, states, regions, countries, territories, and then you want to assign a different color to a, a region when it shares a boundary, a boundary, a, a real edge in common with us. So let me, let me point out that if you have like a, a spoke, the wheels coming in like this, you got a whole bunch of countries that share one point. But if I go red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, I can still tell the difference between the countries. What, what I want to have a different color is when you have country A and country B, and they have a common border that you can walk across. Then, then I really want them to have a different color. And map makers, empirically, have been coloring maps with four colors for centuries. And they never saw it as a mathematical problem. But sometime, somewhere in the late 1800s, it actually came to the attention of a serious mathematician, a serious mathematician. And he quickly dashed off a proof and published it. And 10 years went by before he realized that the proof was wrong. And that set off a chain reaction which continued for many, many, many years. The four color theorem has been proven thousands and thousands of times. I did it when I was 17. I was so proud of the result and I was so protective that I very carefully typed it out. You, you guys don't know what typewriters are, do you? Yeah, typewriter, you know. I typed out the proof. It was 25 pages long. Carefully checked all the details. <laughs> went down to the post office, put it in a sealed package like this, I mean sealed you know, with glue and all kinds of things, and mailed it to myself uh, by some method where you, you pay extra and it, it's stamped with a, a date and a time and delivery and all of that stuff. So now I have a sealed package with the U.S. post office insignia on it saying this package was mailed and, and it's, it's, see, it's got all kinds of stuff all over it. And this was going to be my certificate when the world woke up and realized just how smart I was and that I had proven the four color theorem. Well, of course, after some time I was thinking about my proof and realized it had a hole in it. And I was quite certain I could fix that hole and repair the proof. And I worked on it for a month or two, and then I realized that, no, I couldn't fill that hole. So now, what, what do I do with this silly package? Uh, I kept it for a year or two and kind of beat myself over the head with it uh, from time to time. Uh, whenever I got to, too full for my britches. Okay, but needless to say, lots and lots of people have thought they proved the four color theorem. And there are some less than well-balanced 
emotionally and mentally people out there who insist that they have proved it, and they also send their manuscripts to me and, and, and lots of other mathematicians. And so uh, it hasn't happened in the last year or two, but for about 20 years, I got five manuscripts a year at, at a minimum from somebody saying, here's the proof of the four color theorem. Please write me back to confirm. And there would be four pages of just nonsense in there. Um, and I, at first I would read them and then write carefully back and try to explain where the argument went wrong. And then eventually I just gave up. And I, I got these things and threw them in the trash. Okay.